Hello and welcome to my tutorial. Today I will be discussing Git. What is Git? Hooray! Look at my terrible handwriting. So, Git is a tool designed to allow multiple people to collaborate on a set of text files. Fundamentally. So, when you have a text file, there presents some issues. So say that you have one team member who uses a text file, yeah? So you have this file here, right? You have some writing in it, right? And you have team member one, okay? And this is this is the remote, okay? This is the remote, yep. And you have a team member, so number one and member two. Now, member one and member two both want access to this, but uh, say member one has a copy of it, right? And they add, they add some changes, yeah. And then you have member two, who makes a copy of it, and they add their own changes at the same time. Oh my gosh, what are you gonna do, right? And they both want to put their changes here on the remote. So, get does a cool fancy thing. It compares the two versions of this one, the remote, and whoever is pushing, and attempts to see if they are the same. If they are not the same, it does a merge. So, the way a merge works is if the files differ, right, it first checks the line numbers, so like one, two, three, four, and so on, and if line one does not match line one here, then it puts a merge conflict marker. So a merge conflict marker looks like this, right? And then, uh, well, it looks it, its fundamental structure is like this. This is a merge conflict marker. It puts it in the file. Yep, and it puts the old version here. and the new version here. And so the terminology of what's new versus old depends on what type of merge you are doing, but typically the old version is the one on the remote, and the new version is the one on local. So let's explain a few more concepts on how Git works. That This is what it's designed to do, but it has a lot of tertiary functions. I'm so sorry, that is horrible. Um, Here's the fundamental structure of Git. You have something called a tree, yeah? A tree is a series of commits. So this is a tree and this is a commit, yeah? So each commit has something as a parent commit. So that is the commit prior. and a child commit, which is a commit after. Although usually you really only care about the parent. So this is not a very common relationship here. We don't really use this. So a commit is a snapshot of all of the text files at a certain point, or you can consider it to be that. So, now under the hood, a commit is not actually a snapshot of all the files at a certain point, but you can consider it to be one. So what a commit actually is, is something called a patch file. So what is a patch file? A patch file is a file that describes the changes in a file since the last commit. So you can consider it more something like this, where you have all the files and they all have a list of things added or deleted. Yeah, so if you had a new file, for example, it would be like this. And if you deleted a file, it would be like this. And this is a file with some lines removed. So that is what a commit is. This is a patch file. So a patch file is what a commit actually is. 
each commit has an ID. And the ID is something stupid like a it's hex, right? So it'll look like that. But um, this is the unique ident identifier that describes the commit. And each commit also has a parent ID. And that is this, this one here. So uh, back to trees. So a tree, right, a tree is a set of commits. And it, and it has a start. So this is the first commit in the tree, right? This is the initial or root commit. So another thing that is used for collaborators is say that you have this tree, and this is the main tree that is used by everything, yeah? Um, I'm so sorry, you can see that. So say this is the main tree that's used by everything, and you want to make some changes, but you don't want it to affect the main version of the text. So this is, say, the main tree, yeah? Let me get some new colors here. So this is the main tree. So say that you want to make some changes that don't affect, affect the main tree. You could do something like this. And you could do something like this, where you copy it at a certain point. So say, say that the main tree is getting updated still, and you you copied it when it was right here, yeah? So now, you have created a new tree. This is called more, more, uh, this is more basically called a branch, right? So this is a branch of the tree. So this is the, this is the feature one tree, or, or branch, because the tree is everything. So, the main branch and the feature one branch, right? And this is the same exact thing, uh, except now you can sort of make changes to it um, without worrying about editing the main tree. So now you can add your additions in the form of new commits onto this tree, right? Now, here's the problem. Say that this commit here, right, edits a file, file1, yeah, and you also edit a file, file1, and in the, in, in, in these are commits. So say in two separate commits, you made different edits to a file. So this one deleted some lines, this one added some lines, and they were at different locations or whatever, or the same location even, right? How do you then put these this back onto the end of the tree. So how do you take everything here, right, and sort of copy and then put it here? How are you going to do that? So the great thing about it is it gives you the tools to do this. And that is a merge, which is the thing I described earlier. So it compares the two files finds their differences, and then puts, puts merge conflict markers. And it is up to the reader to determine how they should merge, because it, that is completely undefined behavior. That's up to you, but it's giving you the ability, right? So that is the fundamental of what Git does in a, in a, in a macro sense, yeah? So. Next up, I'm going to describe more about the, the user side of things. So when you're using Git, there are three stages, there are three places a file can be, right? So say you edit a file, yes? And you are currently on the main branch, yep. Now say you want to put this file, this edit that you made, uh, into the main branch. So you need to add a commit to the end of the branch. Yep. So 
you can't just create a commit, and that is done via git commit. Yep. You can't just commit, because there is a second stage, actually, that lets you do another thing. So say that you edited multiple files, actually. Say you made multiple edits, yes? And you only want to include the changes you made to this file, yeah? So we have something called staging. And that goes before a commit. So staging is done via so staging is done via git add and commit. Commit. So say you want to stage something, you can do git add, right? And it puts it into a special place called staging and it removes, right? So this is your file, local file system, yeah. This is staging. So when you do git add, it copies the file from your local file system to staging, right? And now that the thing is in staging, you can commit it. So you can see this when you run git status. Now I've set up a little demo here. So right now we have this file called file1.txt, and there is currently only one commit, right? The initial commit. And it's on the main branch, yes? So say that we make some edits to this file. We add some text, right? And then we save it. Now you can do git status, and you can see changes not staged for commit because it is only on the local file system. And it's, it tells you how to do it. You do git add to update what we committed and discard, get restored to discard. So you can do git add and then a fun little trick, dot will add everything in your current directory, right? And now you can do git status again and you'll see that changes to commit can be committed. So file one is now staged and then you can run git commit. And you need to add a message and Boom, you've just made a commit. And if you look at your log again, you can see that there is now a commit here. And this is its ID. So, back to our little drawing board here, we can see that now that we have a commit, right? You have a new commit. This one has not been pushed to the remote. So a remote is just a Git repository that's shared on a server. So this will be our little server here. Yeah. And this will hold the a version of the master branch, yep. Yeah. Or main branch. And this is the definitive version of the code, right? Or text in this case. So say now that you want to add your commit onto here. How would you do that? There is a funny command called git push, right? And git push takes all of your changes and puts them here. And the way it does this is actually by running a merge. So it's actually sort of just running a merge against the remote version of the branch. So this is technically origin slash main on your machine. So this is on your computer, right? You have origin dot slash main and you have main. So origin slash main is at this point, yes? And then main includes another commit. So the way this actually works is it tries merging these two branches. So this and this. And it can do something called a fast forward merge, which is the simplest type of merge where it just adds the commit onto the end of the current commits. Because you can see that there's no there's no like other things to include here. There's no third commit or anything. It's very simple, right? So it can just take all these and put them on the end of this. Very simple type of merge. So it's actually merging these two branches and then updating this version on the remote with that new merged version. On the inverse, say that we have a change on the remote server, right? There's a change here. And we want to download this onto our branch, right? So in the normal case where there's no conflicts, it will do something called a recursive merge. So a recursive merge is where it sort of just like uh, takes in 
a it it does something called a merge commit. So a merge commit sort of just adds it on, and it does, and then it also makes a new commit. Um, and this one is a little a little different. So it sort of just takes your current branch, adds on the remote commit, yeah, and then creates a merge commit, which is a which usually this is empty. So in the case like where you're just adding this one, it's actually this this thing will be empty because there's no merge that was happening. It's a little bit more complicated than than that, but the basic explanation is you copy the remote commit and then you add a merge commit. This is a recursive merge. And to clarify, the command that the command that does a takes from remote is called git pull. This is a pull. And git pull actually does a merge of, again, these two branches. It's, but instead, this time, it's trying to merge this one onto this one instead of the inverse when you push, it's merging this one onto this one. You see what I'm saying there? Um, so this is a recursive merge rather than a fast forward because you can actually fast forward say you didn't make any of these edits yeah then you could just simply you could just append this onto the end here and now you have updated your current local main branch yep and as another clarification this is usually called origin the remote is usually called origin um, that's just sort of the standard name how, how the same way that this is made now I'm going to switch to a different topic now. So say that you have a branch, right? So this is branch two. And then you there is also another branch called branch one. Actually, for simplicity's sake, we'll call this main, right? So the main branch is a set of commits. And branch two is a different set of commits. They might have a shared base at some point, but this is branch two. Okay. <clears throat> so you can see that these are identical commits. Yeah. And then they sort of change a little bit, right? So say that these two commits are sort of isolated changes. They don't really affect anything else that these commits affected either, right? And they're simple, you know, they might add add file to, right? Now, say you wanted instead of merging. So if you wanted to merge something from if you wanted to merge these two commits onto here, right? Um you you can't really fast it's not very clean to fast forward because you you can't fast forward that, that's the fundamentals because there's new commits here so you'd have to do a recursive merge. so a recursive merge would look something like this and then you have your merge commit yep yeah. now say you're not really a fan of that it's kind of messy right you don't really need this merge commit because these things don't really affect anything. There's no merging needing to be done. So Git has a fun feature called cherry picking. So to cherry pick, you would be on this branch, main, right? And then you would run git cherry pick commit ID, right? And this will copy this commit onto the end here. And and it do any merging if necessary. So git cherry pick takes a commit ID from another branch and copies it onto your current working branch. Now, there is another concept called a rebase. So what a rebase does is it takes commits and moves them onto another branch. So, say you were on branch two and you wanted to change the base of these two commits. Fundamentally, what a rebase does is it sort of cuts off 
sort of cuts off the commit tree at a certain point and then puts it somewhere else instead. So if you did git rebase, if you had were on branch two and you ran git rebase and then the commit ID of this commit, it would uh, fundamentally accomplish the same exact thing. It would rebase It would rebase anything that isn't shared between the two branches. So it automatically sort of knows that this is the same between the two branches, right? And it just puts them onto the end. And then you have something called an interactive rebase. Now this is a very powerful tool that I think is underused. So an interactive rebase allows you to go through all the list of commits from a certain point you can review each commit and customize its options. So by default, it does something called a pick. So a pick just means that it will take the commit and cherry pick it onto the new branch. But you can also do things like squash, um, reword, and edit. So a squash will take this commit, right? Or you can technically only run a squash on something that isn't the first commit. So you could squash and it takes the prior commit and adds the com this commit. It adds it to the prior commit. So it fundamentally squashes it into just one commit. A reword will allow you to change the message on a commit because you have to put a message on each commit. So if you wanted to edit that, you could do that. And then edit will allow you to change the contents of the commit. So you can restage and add new, add new changes. So an interesting thing about rebases is, so say that you have a server with a remote, right? And you on your local are using the main branch, right? And you have some commits. And the remote is the same, yeah. And then you make some changes. And then you have these, the remote is the same, right? So say you do a little rebase and you squash this commit into this commit, right? So you make some changes that the remote doesn't have, except now you've just deleted a commit. So now that this commit is different than the remote, um, you can't push this. It won't merge. It's impossible to merge these two branches because they are not fundamentally compatible. You deleted a commit. This commit technically no longer exists because a commit is not the same thing when you add more to it. So if this is just one commit, right? This is these are not the same commits. So you can't just add this onto the end, right? This is a pre-established commit. So this is called, this is a fundamentally unmergeable situation. Because imagine that you have a second team member, right? You have a second team member and they have their own copy of the master branch that has this version, right? And say you have 10 of these team members, right? And so now you push your new squash version up here, right? So now the remote looks like this. Yeah. And now everyone's version of this is incompatible. And say that they made some edits on their version, right? So now that you change this, right? But theoretically, everyone's changes could be completely broken because you changed a commit, you deleted it. Um, so this is why you don't edit the commit history. Um, so there's a couple things you can do if you wanted to play with the commit history. You can't change existing commits on a remote because it will just break things. You technically can. It is called git push minus minus force. But uh, you will upset everyone that you work with because that breaks everything. So there's a few things you can do. You can do something called a revert. So a revert is a new commit that does the inverse of a previous commit. So say you wanted to get rid of this commit entirely. 
Um, so now you could do something called a revert, and it will sort of just take everything in this command, all the patch, and invert the additions and deletions. So anything you added gets deleted. Anything you deleted gets added in this new commit, and then it adds that to the end of the branch. And now this is a mergeable commit, right? Everyone else can have this. So a couple things that you can't do when you want to edit an existing commit that's already on the remote. Um, you cannot uh, edit the description, edit the contents. Basically, you can't edit anything that would be contained within the commit because it would affect other people's versions of it. However, sometimes uh, you have. This is why when developing things, people usually have to do it on a branch, right? So now you have your own branch. You have your own branch here. And you can do whatever you want. You can delete commits, you can move them around. Sure, delete them, right? Now, when it becomes time to put something onto your remote branch, you merge them together and then push it, right? Because this is your own. In fact, this is what a pull request is. So, a pull request is a fun little tool because you can do whatever you want to your branch as long as it's in the pull request. But then, once it is done, it just gets simply merged into the main branch on the remote. Once it's on the remote, you'll have to make another pull request if you want to edit anything. But this is how people will prevent conflict conflicts from occurring during development. If everyone just force pushed all the time, nothing would work. Now, consider this. How does Git handle a PNG file? Because we know it can store them. It can. I'm telling you that now. It can store a PNG file, right? But a PNG file is not text. You can't you can't merge them, right? They're not they're not just text. Anytime you make a change to something, it'll change some like random bytes in the middle of a line. It doesn't use line endings, so it's not like you can just, right, you can't just merge a PNG file. So this is how Git consider these, considers these binaries, right? And it really can't merge them. So anything that's complex and isn't really text, so anything that's not code, usually, in most Git repositories. A lot of Git repositories have these. So what it's only going to do is then take the checksum of the whole file, which is a unique string that describes the state of the file, and your checksum, right, of your local version. And if they differ at all, right, it is up to you just to pick which version of the file that you want, right? So you pick one and then you commit it. It is entirely up to you to merge it. So it's going to throw you a merge conflict. It's going to leave the uh, old one or the new one. And then you paste the right one in. You do git add for that new correct version, and then you commit it. So it's entirely up to you to merge it. A couple more things that are important to know within git is the checkout commit. So what does a checkout do? You have your main branch and you have branch one. So you are currently working within the main branch, right? And you want to get to branch one. You can do git checkout branch one. And it will move your currently active branch here. <coughs> And so now, any commits you make will be added onto this branch. Now, here's another important tool. Say you are on the main branch, and you have some commits, and you want to go back here without doing a rebase, because that would be a huge waste of time. Right, you want to actually set you want to reset the master branch back to here and remove these two branches, these two commits. So if you know the commit ID, 
you can do git reset commit id. And then there's one argument that is important with reset. So there is something called a soft reset and a hard reset. So minus minus soft and minus minus hard. So the difference between these two is a soft reset will only reset the version within git. So it won't change any of your local files. It will just update like the git log. So if we do git reset head Okay, let me explain this real quick. So say that you don't know this commit ID, but you know that you are on this commit, right? So, you can go back one commit. And how do you do that? That is head squiggly line one. And one is the amount of commits to go back. So you could do something, you could do head squiggly line two. And we'll go back two commits. So say you do git reset head squiggle line 1, you can see that if you do git status, it says that this file has been modified, and that's because it updated its internal state, but it didn't actually update the file. It still says text in there. But now we can see that um, if you do git log, there's only this one commit now, because it removed that one commit from the tree. So now that we're at this point, right, this is head. This is your head. This is the new head. So if I do git reset head minus minus hard, it also updates the files. And you'll now see that we have no changes. And if you open the file, it's empty again. So that is the difference between a soft and a hard reset. A hard reset also resets the files. Now that you understand what the head is, it is the current point at which your commit tree is set. So it's the current commit, right? There's a little bit more to this. So your head can be a commit, right? But it can also be attached. So this is attached, right? So what does attached mean? An attached head means that you are on the latest commit of a branch, right? So if this was your head, if this is your head, you are currently attached. If this is your head, you are detached because this is not a branch. Like, the branch main is currently technically this commit, because each commit, remember, has a set of parent commits, and that describes a branch. So a branch can actually only have one commit on it. I know that sounds confusing, but a branch is actually just one commit, and it's the last commit. And every prior commit is sort of just inferred, right? So as a demonstration, I've restored the original commit, so we still have the test one edit commit here, right? So say that I want to be on this commit. I can set my head here. So I can do this with git checkout. <laughs> so what git checkout does is it puts your head on a commit without actually updating the branch. So it, it allows you to det detach your head. So if I check out that commit, I have now detached my head Right? And so if I look at my log, right, I'm on this commit and it's my head, right? But there's no there's no main. I'm not attached to anything. So if I were to see, and I can now see that my head is detached. So now my head is detached here. So now I can make edits. And if I do get status, there's a thing. So if I add it and then try to commit it. Right? I've committed it, but it's still not on a branch. So now I, I'm sort of in a weird state because this isn't on any branch. It's sort of in limbo. So a fun thing you can do with git now is I can make a new branch. Right? If I look at my status, I'm still detached, but you can see that there's also test one, two, three at this point. So now I could do git checkout test one two three and ta-da I'm reattached. So you can check out branches. So the way you move your head is with git checkout.
the way you move a branch is with git reset. And those are the those are the two things to know. Another thing about git checkout is that it always reflects on your file system. So if I were to do git checkout this, right? I can now have empty files, but if I do git checkout main, the file updates. But if I were to do git reset, so if I git reset and then reset to this, right? And I do a soft reset, the file does not update. And you'll see if you do git status, I'm still on the branch main and the head is still attached to main and main is at this point. So say you reset and you want to undo a reset. Git has a nice feature called the ref log. The ref log describes where the head moves at certain points. So here you can see the last update to the head was I reset by moving to 300 this this commit here right and that's the, this this one right but the previous one before that was when I checked out main right I checked out main from the detached head and you can see the commit ID that it says I was attached to here so this this line here describes what commit I'm attached to so I can just copy this right and say I want to re-add this commit to the branch I could do git reset and then this commit Right, and now you can see that this commit is back on the branch, and that's because each commit knows its parent commit, so I can just add it back. Ta! -da. And now, because I did a hard reset, the text is back. So, for example, here's this other commit that I made, the test one two three commit. So, if I want to get reset, right? You can see that it's actually moved my head here. So this this would not be compatible with a remote because I have technically deleted a commit, right? I've deleted it and replaced it with this one. So it wouldn't you wouldn't be able to push that. But I could merge, so I could go back to this commit, right? This is the one that belongs on the branch. So now we're normal, everything's normal, right? This one belongs on this branch. So now I could do git merge test123. You can see that it detected a merge conflict because we both edited the file. And if you open it, you'll see a merge conflict marker. So this is the version from head and this is the version from test123. Now it's up to me to merge these. So I'm going to merge it like this because that's how I want it to look, right? So you can see that I'm still in a merge mode. And I can also abort a merge. So this is a common pattern. If you're cherry picking, resolving a merge conflict, polling, anything like that, there's always this abort option that you can run. And if you do git status, it'll help you out. So I'm going to add that. I'm going to do git commit, right? And if you don't put a message, it'll automatically make this one merge branch test one two three because that's the thing that I was doing, right? And now I do git status. Everything's clean. And you can see that I have this merge commit, I have the test123 commit, and I have the original version. So that's how a merge works in a practical sense. Now I'm going to show a few other handy commands. So I'm going to go back here. All right, so another handy command that I want to show off is say we have this command, right? And we want to see what on our current head is different from that commit. We can do git diff and then the commit that we want to compare to. So we can see that the difference between these two commits is it deletes test123 and adds text. So our current version, yes, is text. So, in, so git can kind of show you the internals of what the difference between these two are. Another handy command we can do is git branch minus d, and this will delete a branch. So if you do just git branch, you can see a list of all the branches and the one that you're currently on. So if I do git branch minus d, test123, 
it's not merged, so it's saying that I need to confirm that it exists, so I can do this, right? Now I deleted it. And the, the reason it says that it's not merged is because that, that there's a commit that doesn't exist on this current branch. You can see this commit? It would sort of orphan it, like it no longer exists because I just deleted that branch. So now if I do the branch, it's not there. And I can't check it out either. Another handy tip, so say that um, say that I wanted to get a certain file to match the version at a certain commit, but I didn't want to do a revert or a reset, right? Say I wanted to view or set my local file version, so this file, I wanted the contents of it to be the file at another commit. So, so let's say I wanted to get the version without this text in it. So you can you can actually check out individual files into your current branch. So if I do git checkout and then the commit, you can also put a branch so you can get a file from a branch and then file1.txt. You can see it just updated one path. And I do, if I do git status, it's been modified. But now if I open it, I have the version at that commit. So this is really helpful for changing individual files to match specific commits and undoing stuff. So it's like a mini revert, essentially, because I didn't have to revert the entire commit to get that. So let's say I want to undo this edit, right? A great way to undo all of your edits is by doing git checkout head, right? Because this is going to check out the version that is currently stored within git. And look, it's back. So you can also do stuff like this, where you delete the file, right? Look, it's deleted. So if I do git checkout head dot, and remember that dot is everything, same with git add dot, right? It updated every single path in the directory. And look, the file's back. So that's some cool things you can do with git. So now I'm going to talk a little bit about remotes in a practical sense. So what is the git remote command is used to access everything to do with remotes. So if I do git remote, you can see that I don't have any remotes. So uh, let me do git remote add, and then we have to name it. So I'm going to do origin, and then you put the remote URL. So a lot of times this is something like github.com slash username slash repository. Yeah. So I've just added a remote. Now if I do git remote, you can see there's one called origin. So if I do git remote show origin, it will tell me about this remote. So here's the URL, branches, right? So if I do, um, so now say I want to update my local version of this remote. So Git has a sense of your remote, like locally. So it has, you remember that there's the branch called origin slash main, right? So that describes a branch that is actually a remote branch. So if I do git branch, you'll see that it doesn't exist, right? I do git git checkout origin slash 1.12, you can see that that's a branch here, right? It doesn't exist. That's because I need to do git fetch. Git fetch essentially updates your local representation of a remote. You can see I picked a very bad repository for this because it's quite large. <laughs> but now you can see on branch main, Still no branch, but I can do git checkout origin slash 1.5. And you see now I'm on a detached head because this isn't a real branch. It's just a it's just a commit. It's a reference to a commit. See here? So now I can do git branch 1.12. Yeah. And I have my own one point local version of the 1.12 branch. And you'll see that it matches origin. So I can also do git pull. So what git pull does is essentially git fetch and then also git merge origin slash 1.12. It does the, those two things in succession. That's what a pull is. So you can see that I didn't do it correctly here and it's mad at me. So if I do git merge, because it, it doesn't know which remote branch corresponds to the branch I made. So that's why it's telling us to set the tracking information. So if I do git pull, so if I do, sorry, git branch minus minus set upstream 
2 equals origin slash 1.12. Subtract. Now I can do get pull. And you can see local branch is configured, right? 1.12 merges with remote 1.12. So that's pretty standard. Now say I made a commit, I could do git push, and it puts any changes that I added on my local version to it. And the way it does that is, again, by doing a merge between this and this, <coughs> and then pushing that. Now another thing, so say that uh, you made a file, file2, and you wrote some stuff in it, right? Now, say you stage this, right, git add dot, right, you stage the file, um, but wait, oops, I didn't want to stage that, and do git restore minus minus stage, wrong one, and you'll see that it's no longer staged. So a couple more things when you're using git. When you just get started, uh, there's an important thing you should do. So you'll notice each commit has an author, right, and this is my author tag. So this is my name. This is my email. Every commit has to have a name and email attached to it. So the way that Git determines what your name and email are, um, when you first install Git, it's going to be something very generic. I forget what it is. I think it's based on your username. But there is a git config user.name, right? And you can see that mine is set to it's now. And user.email, which is set to this. So when you first get git, you're going to want to set those. So you need to put minus minus global, so it applies globally, and then put your email. And you can now see that it's updated. So if I remove the dev, you can see it's now updated. So it's important before you start making commits to put these. And know that these are public, so if you put them on a remote like GitHub, uh, this is visible. So you need to be sort of careful with that. And I'm going to actually show you real quick how it's visible. So if you're on GitHub, right, and you click on a commit, it's just going to show you this. And this doesn't really give you all that much. It's it's your username, right? You can see the para commit, see all the changes. So there's actually a little feature where you can see the internal version of something. So you put dot .patch on the end. You can see this is what an actual commit looks like. This is a real commit. And this is the important part right here. You can see that it shows the author, and that's where it's visible. So you need to make sure that you keep that private. And that's everything for my Git tutorial. So thank you for watching. I hope you learned something. Uh, feel free to leave any questions in the comments.